So what we're going to do now is actually fit the return, return cranks. And um, yeah, these are part of the Valshots valve gear, but we're going to be putting them on now as per the instructions from Roundhouse, just to keep uh, the two rods that are actually, if you like, floating on the rear crank pin, just to keep them on. So we're going to be fitting them in roughly the position that they should be uh, fitted. And um, what I'll do, I'll um, in the film, I'll just show a picture of the diagram that's actually shown in the instructions that gives the sort of geometric correct position um, uh, of the return crank. And again, with a washer in between. So we're going to put them on now. Just just pinch the, 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 the nut and bolt uh, tight just to keep these two uh, rods from floating backwards and forwards and causing problems um, when completing the rest of the valve gear. So I've just got that diagram next to me here for, for reference. And the first thing to notice is... Um, when fitting the return crank, rear crank pin is vertically above the center of the axle, directly, uh, directly above, and then the return crank self is at such an angle, because you can clamp it, it's at such an angle that it's at also uh, directly horizontal through the heart of the axle. So that's what I'm going to try and do. And note this is the forward rotation, so let's have a look here. When we got move forward, the wheel actually goes this way around, so this is of the left hand side. So now what we've got to try and do is move the wheels so that the return crank is directly above the axle. That's the first position, let's do that. So, directly above the axle, take a look. Just move it for the wheel just slightly so it's directly above the axle like that okay so the idea now is to add another 5BA washer like this and then um, add uh, the return crank now you will need to have a look here let me see if I can show you this on the camera if you like, there's like a front and a back. See, there's a there's a there's a cut out there. This side is, if you like, this is flush where that horn is, and the other side it falls away. So, in other words, when it's actually on the axle, one side is further away from the motion than than the rest. So, on the flat side here needs to be on the outside. This is actually tapped, by the way. This is actually tapped. So this one actually needs to be on the outside. So let's uh, crack on with and put and fit it now. So the wash is on there. And it's going to be going on something like something like that so let's wheel is vertical this needs to go a lot more a lot more roughly like that for now pin is vertical and uh, it's at 90 degrees so I'm gonna just clamp it there for now Just to, just to make sure that the old bits and pieces don't come off. And I'm going to repeat the process for the other side. So, crank pin directly above the axle and the eccentric, sorry, the return crank in, in line with the heart of the, of the axle horizontally. So, it's that side and then the other side's the same. Okay, so the next um, components that we're going to be fitting are uh, all to do with the way shaft, which is this component up here, 
and the expansion link here and its bush. The component that I'm pointing to now is the waste shaft bracket and I'm just going to pick that up a second to show you a close up. If you can see that you have the expansion this is the waste shaft bracket and what happens is um, if you can bring it any closer it's got two tabs on the side. Um, these tabs rest on the top of the chassis frame and the expansion link bush goes through this hole that goes through the chassis frame and then it's fastened clamped on the other side with a nut. I'll try to demonstrate that now. So here we have the expansion link nut. It goes through here like that yeah and then it's mounted onto the chassis going through a hole here and then the nut is mounted onto the other side and then when that assembly is on there when that assembly is on there this expansion link Uh, is put on, uh, uh, fits into it like that. <laughs> How it is in reality is slightly different. Okay, so here's the problem that I've come across. Here we have the expansion link bush. The expansion link bush. This guy has to go through this hole. The bush does not fit through the hole does not fit through the hole so I've got to just ream it out the hole out a bit just to get rid of the, the paint in there I want it to be a tight fit I don't want it to be a sloppy fit um, and uh, so I'll get on with that now and then we can uh, crack on with the rest of the with the build as the instructions say concerning the fitting of the expansion link and the waste shaft and the waste shaft bracket okay you can just see there I've actually managed to ream it out I've actually what you can't see perhaps can't see in the first instance is I've actually just put a piece of paper just covering the um, the open valve chest I don't want any rubbish getting into the valve chest while I'm actually doing this Okay, here's the waste shaft bracket. There it is. So it needs to go on here like this. I'll just put it on here like this. But what's going to happen is um, the tabs, the tabs on the side of the weight bucket bracket need to be bent backwards slightly so that they rest on top of the chassis. So I'll take it all apart, do that now, and reassemble. Can you see that? They've actually bent inwards but either way what you're supposed to do is when it's mounted the upper ring the upper hole is slightly forward than the lower um, hole so now we get the the link book expansion link bush put it through the way shaft bracket fit it into the chassis, get the nut and what you're doing then is actually clamping clamping the waste shaft bracket in place. The, the bending of those lugs at the top ensures that the hole that it's not going to flap about backwards and forwards. These lugs are bent slightly over the chassis frame there yeah, so they hold it in place and if you look at it from the side if I can get that right I hope you can see that the hole for the way shaft is slightly more forward than the hole where the expansion link goes in
so I'll just tighten it up. But there is a warning in the instructions to be careful tightening up um, this nut. Just let me, a bit difficult with the gold in the camera, saying tightening up. I have to be careful tightening up this nut because it is brass. Okay, then I've got the final tightening of the nut here. Take it easy. So, not more than that. There we go. Okay, here we are. We're about to uh, fit the waste shaft bracket and the waste shaft to the other side. But you have to remember, of course, first put the waste shaft in the other bracket first. And then in a new bit of bracket and then a new bracket for the other side and then mount onto the chassis frame because if you don't do that you're never going to get the bracket in so then it goes on like that and then the nut is going to go on the other side okay and then we tighten that fast and then we've got the the way shaft the way shaft bracket and the two bushes for the expansion le uh, le links fitted. So we'll just tighten that last one up now. Okay. There's the expansion link fitted. Free movement. Okay, you can now clearly see that the way shaft axis is in front of the expansion link axis. This is the right hand side of the locomotive by the way and that is how it should be. And you see the, let me see if you can do that, the, the little collars here from the way shaft resting on top of the chassis frame. 